nice catch, Sean. <laughs> we definitely have to go through there at a high tide. We almost hit a rock. Bad idea. But Sean is a great dinghy driver. Let's go have a look. Uh, what? You're not trying that again, are you? No. No. Last time aboard Freedom, we said farewell to Tofino and hello to Barkley Sound, one of Vancouver Island's most magnificent cruising grounds located on its west coast. Once we found a perfect anchorage for the evening, we wasted no time exploring this gorgeous destination. We even got lucky finding one of the area's most entertaining and unique hidden gems, the Lucky Creek Falls. So if you missed it, be sure to check it out. While we would have loved to continue exploring British Columbia and farther north into Alaska, we unfortunately aren't blessed yet with the ability to travel full time and don't have an endless fuel budget. We're still working hard to make that dream a reality. So for now, we're gonna enjoy the time we do have by taking advantage of one more day here in Barkley Sound before completing our circumnavigation of the island. Nothing says afternoon like coffee. <laughs> or Modelo and egg rolls. Mmm, a little it's light like, snack. It's like Panda Express out here. Mm. Yeah, it kind of smells like a Panda Express. Martha, you, you took mommy's seat. You need to get a life jacket on so you can go exploring, honey. Yeah, pretty soon we're going to go explore, Martha. Want to go get your brother, get suited up? This doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah, the water here is still really nice and green. It's like aqua. It's not as warm. Yeah, it's about 60 degrees versus 67. There are supposed to be wolves on the island, so we will not be doing the hiking trail. But Sean got the car out of the garage, so we'll go exploring. Barkley Sound is home to over 100 islands, islets, and dramatic rock formations known as the Broken Group Archipelago. Having some of the richest and most diverse marine life in the world thanks to nutrient-rich bottom water and a warming effect generated by prevailing westerly winds, this sound has the highest concentration of bald eagles in North America, over 90 species of colorful starfish, and over 40 species of shrimp. My goodness, Forrest Gump would have surely loved this place. It's also an epicenter for beautiful rock formations, sea caves, impressive shallow reefs, and approximately 60 old shipwrecks that are popular dive destinations. This area is commonly called the Graveyard of the Pacific because many navigators from days past would mistake Barkley Sound for the Strait of Juan de Fuca, thus cruising full speed ahead and ending up on the many reefs and islands that dot the sound. In fact, in 1972, the car carrier Van Lien, carrying 300 Japanese cars, sank right here near this large islet, located on the east side of Austin Island. So if you come to explore the Broken Group, it might be in your best interest to do it via a dinghy, paddleboard, or kayak.
Oh, it's like the Goonies. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Wow, starfish everywhere. Oh, God. Nice catch, Sean. <laughs> we definitely have to go through there at a high tide. We almost hit a rock. Bad idea. But Sean is a great dinghy driver. Let's go have a look. Uh, what? You're not trying that again, are you? No. no. A little bit. We can show them. What? You got lucky before that you were able to back out nicely. See? Big rock. Right there. Okay. No need. No need. No need. It's like a freaking rapids, Sean. <laughs> oh my god. Oh gee. Oh, and there's like starfish. Although we didn't spot whales, sea otters, puffins, or the colonies of sea lions often found here in the Sound, we sure were happy that we got to enjoy one more night in this very beautiful and unique destination. Thursday morning breakfast. Now, if every Thursday was this way, I'd be on the show my 400 pound life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not a typical breakfast aboard Freedom, just special Thursday occasions. Oh, buddy. Hi, bud. Are you helping daddy? Sean's getting the dinghy all cleaned up. Gonna put her back on the boat and get going pretty soon. Cool yeah, it's uh, <laughs> got chilly overnight, I guess. Yeah. The water's still 61. Maybe we'll have to take a dip. You never know. Okay, the dinghy's up, the sun's out. Time to do this cold plunge therapy before we talk ourselves out of it. Woo! Not too bad. Warmer than I thought. <laughs> Woo! What? What, sweetie? Well, I just needed to do it before I talk myself out of it. Don't worry. We can just keep doing it. <sighs> Woo! Go for three. Three. Oh. oh, for the love of God, why does she think this is a good idea? Not too bad. 
Ugh. All right, I'm gonna do a lap around the boat. Generator running. For those who don't know, don't know what a gun step is, some boats are louder than others at anchor when they're running the generator. And usually when the water is mixed with the exhaust and spitting out, it's generally louder. Ours, the exhaust gases are separated from the cooling water. So here there's just a, a constant kind of stream of exhaust gas, which is really, really quiet. And actually the louder part is the water. And right now the boat's pretty empty on fuel. When it's full, this water is actually expelled below the water line, so you don't even, you don't even hear it. So it's pretty nice. Coming from some of our previous boats that had a generator, uh, having a Gen Sep muffler where the water is extracted from the gas and they're expelled separately is much, much quieter. Anywho, moving right along. Uh, not a bad day for a swim. I'm gaining on you. Oh boy. And then on this side of the boat, we have some more water leaking out. This outlet is our water maker. I call this the brine outlet. So the water maker grabs water from the sea and it extracts, it runs it through, a, a, I guess, a super filter, if you would, called a membrane. Um, and then on the end of the membrane where the fresh water is, that goes into the tank. And then all of the wastewater, the brine, the water with the high salinity, uh, gets discharged here. So that's our brine outlet discharge for our water maker. And now we're heading just about 22 miles to uh, Bamfield. We're finally gonna check out Bamfield. We were supposed to go yesterday. We got caught up here because it's so beautiful. We didn't wanna leave Barkley Sound. Um, so Bamfield is just on the very end of the sound. It's kind of on the south entrance into here. Um, so yeah, it should be a good good ride. Light Winds are light, five knots, at least right here. Um, they're supposed to be pretty light, I think outside of here as well. And uh, yeah, kind of sad. Every time we leave Canada, I feel like I'm gonna cry. <laughs> okay, and those rocks. As you can see, there's these X's, oops. There's these X's on the charts. I mean, they're, they're pretty obvious. They're kind of the blue. The blue shades are where it starts to get shallow, but these X's are where there's some big rocks. Uh, we know some people who lost stabilizer fins in this very area. So I'm gonna make sure to go out this way, be very careful, and then hit our hit our course uh, once we get out of the bay. But uh, rocks are nothing to uh, mess around with. Surrounded by public and First Nations land, as well as the Pacific Rim National Park, Bamfield is a small community with a lot to offer visiting cruisers, including a great protected anchorage in the Bamfield Inlet. We really had no idea what to expect before arriving, but we were really shocked at how great of a town this is. After we paddled to shore, we took a long walk around the waterfront via the boardwalk. 
Here we found restaurants, a grocery store, a fun little trinket forest, and what Sean claims is the best public outhouse he's ever used. <laughs> You're using the treehouse toilet. You get like flowers in there? No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. does it really? Yeah. You weren't kidding. Got plants? It's pretty nice up here. Okay, that wins. Best outhouse we've ever seen. But I'm not gonna use it. Commercial fishing was based in Bamfield until the 1980s, but today it's primarily a tourist destination, either for sport fishing, ocean kayaking, or the West Coast Trail. And speaking of hiking, if you follow the road out of town for about 30 minutes or so, you'll find yourself at Brady Beach, a must if you come. It's so beautiful, it feels somewhat private, and it also has a great lookout love seat to take in these amazing views. There's a love chair or a love seat up in the rock. How cool is that? Oh, this is cool. Just be sure to bring your climbing shoes to be safe. This is a nice lookout. How cool is this? Luckily, it's bolted down to the rock, but you can't beat that view and these rocks. Oh, buddy. Oh, so found something he's rolling in. Next time we're on the west coast of Vancouver Island, we're definitely going to come back to Bamfield to more fully enjoy a beautiful summer beach day. After a three hour nap on the bow in this beautiful weather, it is time for dinner. So Sean, what's for dinner? Uh, would you look at that? Delivery? No, DiGiorno. Delivery? No, it's DiGiorno. This is a neither. This is... and over pizza we looked at the weather and looked at the wind forecast and Sean came up with a plan C for our return back to Seattle and we are leaving now <laughs> uh, it's a 24-hour run we were going to leave um, bright and early tomorrow morning um, and then get there Saturday morning what's today today's Thursday I'm totally losing track of my days um, we were gonna leave Friday morning arrive in Seattle early Saturday morning um, but the Strait of Juan de Fuca has some sketchy wind forecasted for like right when we're going to be coming past the Victoria area. Tonight it looks a little better. Uh, yeah, it's 7.45 now. We'll get into Seattle uh, around 8 o'clock Friday night and then we'll have the whole weekend to kind of clean her up and, and get ready for our work week next week. That's boating. You know, you always got to look at the weather. We have gotten so lucky this trip that the weather has been in our favor so much, really, for two weeks straight. Friday to Friday, we'll be getting back uh, two weeks to the day that we left. Um, yeah, so let's hope for the best. Here goes a 24-hour run for us. 
we took that nap on the bow, so we both feel pretty energized right now. Um, so hopefully uh, we actually can be energized throughout the night and have a, a pretty good ride. If for some reason we get out onto the ocean and the weather is not great, we have Port Renfrew as a backup plan as well. We will be there in about five hours if we need to. Um, and then also Port Angeles as well if the strait gets a little gnarly. So here we go. Despite feeling sad and a bit depressed that this experience is coming to an end, Sean and I are feeling proud and energized at what we've accomplished in only 15 days. We covered over 900 nautical miles from Seattle to Desolation Sound, to the Octopus Islands, to farther north into the Broughtons to a grizzly bear haven, to even farther north to Sullivan Bay before rounding the northwest corner of Vancouver Island to complete what's now our second circumnavigation. We proved yet again that even with limited time and money and a slow boat, we can still have the time of our lives. If you missed any of the fun we had on this trip, be sure to check out our full playlist, Summer Cruising in British Columbia 2023, and watch from the beginning. Our final overnight passage home was calm and peaceful, the best one yet. Sean got to catch up on a few more hours of sleep while I managed the helm, and I got to take in one more beautiful sunrise before saying farewell to British Columbia and hello to Washington State. Circumnavigated. Yeah, we've uh, officially crossed our track. Say we've rounded the island. In two boats now. Yeah. And that was exactly two weeks and 14 hours. I was calculating. Two weeks for both boats. Yeah. Yeah. We did it. Nice job, Sean. Two weeks in a fast boat and two weeks in a slow boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no excuses with a slow boat. No excuses that you can't go far in a short period of time. We had three long runs on this trip, right? A 20 hour, a 30 hour, and a 24 hour? Yeah. Otherwise, the other runs are average days. Yeah. That's also a great way to save on the food that you need for these long trips, because on these long trips, on these long runs, we don't really eat <laughs> or drink. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah, have some good, snacks. Good for your diet, good for your budget. Good yeah, for your it's good for intermittent fasting. It's good for not needing three days worth of food. Yeah. Look at all the Check. shop from three knots of current. I know. Although this is the end of yet another incredible adventure on the water, we like to think of it as the beginning of a new one, whatever that might be. So if you'd like to jump aboard and join us on our future adventures, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to be notified anytime we post a new video, be sure to click that notification bell so you won't miss it. We'll see you soon.